from generating AI images, remixing existing models, and training your own AI model to generate specific images to your liking, this is Leonardo AI. Creating an account with Leonardo AI is extremely easy. Go ahead and go to link one in the description down below. It'll take you to this page right here. You can either click launch app on the top right or create an account. Let's go ahead and click on create an account. It'll take us to this page right here. We can see some awesome art in the background. Let's go ahead and just choose to sign up with Google. All right, welcome to Leonardo AI. You're welcome to read this if you want. It'll just give you a little bit of an idea about what you're seeing on this dashboard, but we're gonna be going through all of this in just a moment. So let's go ahead and just click the X on the top right. The next level of quality, Alchemy V2 is now here. Something we'll be going over as well. Let's go ahead and exit out of that. And here we are. We are now on the Leonardo AI dashboard. Now there's a lot going on on this dashboard, but let's go ahead and start with the easiest, AI image generation. Go ahead and navigate to the left side of your screen and let's click on that guy right there. Again, there's a lot going on, but this is all very easy to understand. On the top left of your screen, you will have 150 coins or starting credits that you get for free when you create an account. On the right side of the screen, next to the generate button, you'll see how many tokens it uses per generation. This will change as we tweak stuff or change settings. So on the left side, right under your credits, you will have number of images. This is pretty self-explanatory, how many images you want to generate. Now note, if I go up to eight, that's going to change the credits or tokens used to eight as well. So keep in mind when we make changes over here, that can affect the credits used. Next is photo reel. Below that is photo reel, which also uses alchemy. Now these are used for hyper realistic photos. If we click this on, we'll notice that alchemy also turns on with an output resolution. While this is self-explanatory, up here we have depth of field and raw mode. If we go ahead and click on to this, we can see that we have two settings in the photo reel options. So this right here goes between low and high. The depth of field setting is how shallow or deep you would like your photo to seem. Low means more shallow and high gives it a higher depth of field. In raw mode, that allows you to have more control over the complexity of your prompt. So if you have a shorter prompt, say five to eight words, we can go ahead and leave raw mode off. But if you have eight or more words in your prompt and you have complex animation styles or specifics you want inside of your photo, you can go ahead and turn raw mode on. Then we can just go ahead and click save. Below Alchemy, we have public images. Now this will automatically be locked to on if you're on a free account. Now all this does is whenever you generate an image, it automatically posts it to the community feed, which anyone can find on their dashboard. Below that we have input dimensions. This is gonna be the input that feeds into Alchemy, but Alchemy's output resolution is going to be much higher set right there. Here we have advanced controls. The first one is uh, your aspect ratio. So if you're wanting like a YouTube thumbnail, you can set it to 16.9. If you're looking for more of a TikTok or portrait, you can set to 9.16. There's a lot of different things we can mess around with here. I'll go ahead and leave it at 3.2. Guidance scale is basically how strictly your prompt is followed, your text prompt up here. You can give Leonardo a bit more artistic freedom, if you will, by lowering this. Or by raising it, you can have it strictly follow your prompt. You'll notice, though, that if you hover over it while Alchemy is on, this will be disabled. So you can play around with this and see what you really like, what your preference is. You can choose to either go by guidance scale. Notice though that the higher you go on the guidance scale, you may actually get this warning message. It basically says that if you raise it above a seven by too much, you may see like image degradation or things just get kind of funky. Let's put it that way. Your image may not turn out the way you want. Now I've put this as high as 10 and not seen any issues, even though we still have this warning, 
but that's just up to you. Go ahead and generate, mess around, and see what you like best. Now below that we have tiling. This is basically a feature just for a repetitive image. So let's just say you're making an all over t-shirt pattern and you want it to be one solid set pattern that's just infinitely repeating. You can turn on tiling. We're gonna go ahead and leave this off. Now below, we have image to image. This used to be right below, but now we actually have it up here in image guidance. So we can click on that tab. Now here, along with our prompt, we can actually use an image to guide the AI model into whatever output we would desire. So let's just say we have a picture of Squidward. Let's throw a picture of Squidward in there. And you can see that we now have an image to image setting window that has popped up to the right. Two things to note, it will automatically detect the image to image, but we'll have a strength meter and we actually have an error down here as well. So when we set our aspect ratio up here, it differed from what we actually input. We can easily click this button right here to automatically set the aspect ratio and the error goes away. Much like guidance scale, strength tells the AI model how strongly to rely on our image. Lowering this gives the model a bit more artistic freedom and raising it makes it more strict. It wants to follow the exact lines, patterns, and whatever our image represents strongly. If we have a basic idea of what we want, but we need a more complex idea to actually generate with, we can click on the next tab, which is prompt generation. Here, we're presented with two options, or really two input menus. The first being the number of prompts we'd like to generate. Let's just say four. And then we have the basic prompt idea here. So here's where we can enter something like, uh, a dog, let's just say a dog, and then we can click ideate on the right side. And here we have generating a bunch of different prompt ideas that we can then copy and paste up there or just click on generate and we can automatically generate an image with this prompt. So let's say a regal husky standing tall and proud against a backdrop of snow capped mountains. Let's go ahead and just click generate. Now, because we put an image to image input in there and we set the strength high, we got a bunch of Squidward with a bunch of different forehead things going on. I don't really know what's going on here, but that's definitely not a dog. If we were to go in and simply turn off our image input and then go back to prompt generation and click it again, but let's change it to two generations. Ah, yes that is much better so you can see that the image guidance will heavily impact the prompts that you generate on the top here right under your generate bar there's a few things of import that we can talk about the first is fine-tune models which we're actually going to fine-tune a model of our own so we can get more of what we specifically want out of our images that we generate in just a moment here is just a simple style option. You can choose none or Leonardo style. Seriously, up to user discretion. Mess around, play around, and see what you like most. We're going to skip this add elements for a second just to say this negative prompt right here. If we click this on, it'll open up another prompt window. But this is going to make sure if there's something showing up in our generative that we do not want to see, we can put this in here. So let's just say that the moon was in the background. We could say the moon, and let's just say there was a person. We could say person, man, people. So we could remove the moon or any people that are in our generative that we would like to, or rather that we'd like not to have there. To the left of the negative prompt, and we can click that off now, we have the add elements option. This is a new feature to Leonardo, which is really cool. If we click on it, we'll notice it opens up a few compatible ideas, if you will. If we want to implement a certain design or artistic style into our own generative, we can easily do that by clicking on it and confirming. Now I'm not gonna confirm it as I like our Husky that we've made, but this is just an easy way to do that. You can also see that there is a ton of different options and art styles that you can easily incorporate into your generative. 
Back at your dashboard now, and it's time to create our own model. Now, this is awesome because we can create a model that is referenced every time we generate a prompt. We can create a multitude of models for a multitude of uses. You can see your models and everyone else's models in the fine-tuned models tab. We'll actually find our model there in just a moment, but first, we actually have to train our data set that our model is going to run off of. You can see a landscape model right here that I used for a depth map presentation. You can see that video in the card, or I'll post it at the end of this one. It's honestly really, really cool. We turned these into 3D planes. Anyways, on this page, go ahead and click on New Data Set. Now, here we can name our data set and describe it. Let's go ahead and say, I want to generate some images in a traditional Asian art style. So we'll just name this traditional Asian art. And let's just say a fun description. And then go ahead and click on create data set. Now you'll notice that our name and description transferred over, but now it's asking us for data set images. So we need to get a collection of images that really displays or tells the Leonardo model what we want to represent in this model. So for this, we're going to go to raw pixel. This is a collection of public domain work. So we can use this copyright and royalty free. Go ahead and type in Asian art, and here we go. Let's grab a bunch of these images. Now that we have a ton of images, we can drag and drop them all right here and let them upload. Once those are done uploading, and you can see you do have a limit of 40 images, you can go ahead and just click on train model on the right side. That'll bring up this menu here. Now this menu is pretty straightforward. We have your model name, the resolution of your images, the category that your model is going to be in, because remember, this will go into the community pool, if you will. That's why you also have to mark if your model is NSFW or not safe for work. Leonardo does allow these models on their platform. They just have to be correctly noted. You can enter a brief description of your model, and then set the base diffusion you would like your training model to be on. Honestly, go ahead and just choose the newest version of stable diffusion. That's going to be what the back end is really generating on. And then we have our instance prompt. So we could just say uh, an Asian, or let's just say uh, Edo era Japanese mountainside. And then we can start training our model. You'll note that I have an out of models note down here. And that's because on the free plan, you can only have one fine tuned model on your account at a time. So let's actually go and say we did train this model. Where would it show up? Well, if we exit out of this and go back to home, we can see that we have a fine-tuned model section. Aha, uh -huh, yes, we are back to this. If we click on this, the first thing it's going to show is all of the models by Leonardo. These are all of the platform models that are offered. Next, we can see community models. So if there's one that we want to reference, let's just say we like this style here the Anime Girls 1.0 by Crit. We can then click on it and generate directly from this model. Now note that we can also see our models right here, like the landscape model that I've generated, and favorite models. These are gonna be models that we have favorited from the community. You can see on the top right of any of these, we can bookmark or favorite them right there. Next, let's go ahead and go down to user tools and take a look at the AI canvas. This is where we can really extend or expand upon our prompting. For this, let's really start with a prompt and let's go ahead and just use Edo era Japanese mountainside. And let's actually say village. Let's add a village in there. And then go over to the right. Let's make sure that our fine tuned model is on the newest stable diffusion. Or if you want, let's actually go ahead and use our landscape model that we've created. Here we have canvas mode. There's a few options here. They're very self-explanatory depending on what you're wanting to do and accomplish. 
For this, we're just going to use the base text to image model. This is going to use our prompt without using any other input like an image for a reference. Let's go ahead and just create one image. Now, the photorealism option, we're actually going to turn off photoreal and alchemy as our landscape model is more painterly and not hyper realistic. We'll go ahead and leave the image dimensions alone. And let's say we want a YouTube thumbnail. So let's change this to 16 by 9. This down here, the width and height will automatically change themselves. Now we have rendered density. This basically, well, says decreases the size and increases the pixel density of the generated context. So let's just go ahead and leave that alone. If we had the alchemy and photo reel on, we may turn that up just a bit. We'll leave the guidance scale. Again, this just weights our prompt. We'll leave that right at seven. And we're not creating a repetitive pattern, so we'll just leave tiling alone. At any time, we can reset this all to default, but let's go ahead for now, just click on generate. All right, and here we have our generated image. Now, I only selected one on the number of images before we generated. If you select multiple, you'll have these arrows here to take you forward and back throughout them. We can cancel the generation or very self-explanatory, we can accept it and it will now become a part of our canvas. From this, we can tweak our generative a little bit. We can choose a masking tool, which will mask a specific area. So say we wanna mask the village out, we can do that before exporting it. Or let's say we wanna completely erase something like taking the border off the top. We can start to do that if we like and make it more of like a rigid image. Now you can do this on anything. It's just the border was convenient here and you can see it's fairly quick to do. We can make this borderless. We also have access to a sketching tool. So if we wanna sketch directly on our generative, of course a big splotch of white doesn't look the best, but you get the point. We can also add text to our image or upload another image to add to our generative. We also have the option to regenerate at any time. And if we click the little controls to the left, we have a negative prompt window as well. Back on the homepage, there is one more texture generation option in the user tools. We're gonna to be diving into this in a future tutorial as this is very, very in depth. If you're someone that's very familiar with rendering objects on Blender, you can upload a .obj file and have fun with their 3D texture generation to your heart's content. But for now, let's go back to the homepage and check out some cool things we can do with the community feed generatives. Let's say we're looking through the community feed and we're suddenly inspired. Let's say this little raccoon just makes us want to create off of this model. If we click onto it, there's a few things we can do. Now at the bottom, we can see the exact fine tune model used for it and start generating with that model directly. If we go back up, we can do things such as copy the prompt that was used. You can see the entire prompt right here. We can also use image to image, so we can reference this image as an input for a future generative, or we can remix directly off of this image in its entirety. All of these community options or community generatives are free to mess and toggle around. Let's say we wanna use this car, they all have the prompt so you can learn from them and the remix and using the model options as well, which I think is really cool. If you like a creator, you can follow them. And if you like an image itself, there's the heart button so you can save it. If you enjoyed this video or found it educate, no. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative and would like to see some more of my tutorials as they come out, we're always staying ahead of the trend. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video while you're down there. It really does help. If you have any questions, leave a comment. But other than that, these videos on your screen now are some of the most awesome tutorials that I've ever made on some seriously cool AI tools, including the depth map tutorial, where we take a base flat 2D image that you saw that we made with the landscape tool and we turn it into an entire 3D plane using Stable Diffusion, a free locally installed tool.